In this video series, we will look at the basics of color mixing with wet on wet watercolors. We will take a closer look at each individual color, how to enter into its mood or gesture, and to look at why this particular set of six Stockmar watercolors is useful to painting within the Waldorf curriculum. Before me, I have two sets of watercolors. In the jars are the Stockmar paints, and down on the right in the plastic palette are some Windsor & Newton tube paints that I use for layered watercolor painting as well as illustrating. I'd like to talk about why we have this particular set of six colors, how it's useful, and how none of them are actually true primaries, and there's a good reason for that. I've made up a little color chart of sorts utilizing both sets of paints. Now, if you wanted a set of the most basic colors that you could mix to replicate the colors we see within the world, you would in theory need only the three primary colors plus the addition of darkness and light. These colors would be primary magenta, primary yellow, and primary or cyan blue a side note, this is not cyan blue because I don't have that in my painting set. If you wanted to get a closer look at what these three primaries actually look like, you could open up any printer and you will find all three of them in your colored inks with the addition of black. And all of those inks plus the white of the paper would allow you to print any photograph that you might have duplicating most of the colors that we see out in the world. Now, why have more colors in a painting set? Because each of these colors, whether derived from natural or synthetic materials, or both, is not quite a perfect match. Different pigments have different qualities or personalities. Natural pigments especially like to move in different ways across the page. Some spread more easily, moving as if they have a mind of their own. Some mix better than others. Some are harder to spread. Some are bolder and some are softer. So if you look at this little chart here, between the magenta and the yellow, if I wanted a very minimalistic painting set, I could, in theory, mix all the colors ranging from red down into vermilion and orange and gold and a warmer yellow and into yellow. But because each of these colors has sort of its own personality, they don't quite mix to make a perfect true orange. So that's why it's helpful to actually have a red pigment or a vermilion pigment within my painting set. And red, it should be noted, is not a true primary. It is magenta with a tiny bit of yellow in it. Now, sort of going along the outside, I have labeled where the Stockmar colors are in relationship to this little sort of color chart. Um, crimson red is pretty, is, is neighbors with magenta, but it is actually a little bit darker and that gives it some power and some oomph when you're painting. If you were to only paint with magenta, you would find that you get this very soft pink color, but it would be hard to get substantial red on the page and that you wouldn't quite get enough depth. Another color that helps us give us some darkness and depth is this Prussian blue. So Prussian blue is moving from blue down closer towards green. It has a little bit of yellow in it, but it also has a little bit of black. So that makes it a darker color. If we had cyan and we only painted with that, it would be this bright, clear blue that we could never really get darker depth or form or the feeling of like the rich deep ocean color and waves. Um, so it, those two colors, especially between the crimson and the Prussian blue, they allow us to bring form and depth into our work. Vermilion is going to help us mix a little bit something closer to orange. So some may argue whether it's a red or not, I view it as being closer to orange than I do really seeing it as being red. 
But vermilion, by nature, that pigment is very strong and you don't need as high a concentration because it will make its voice known very quickly across the page. The gold is helpful for getting sort of warmer, richer yellow tones. It's helpful for blending some orange. It's helpful for bringing some depth into the yellow. Whereas the lemon yellow is better for making green. And green is the one color that's a little mysterious. Green never really works well out of the tube, as we say. If you buy one tube or one pot of green paint, that's all it's gonna paint, is that one particular color. And green, as we experience it in the natural world, has so much liveliness and movement between the light of the sun filtering between the leaves and the shadows and the different kinds of green we see in plants. So green is best mixed um, on its own with between yellow and blue so that you get this real variation and liveliness as we actually experience it. And lastly, we have ultramarine, which is a blue that if you're looking at sort of a little triangle here, it's a blue that's a step closer towards magenta. And that means that as a natural pigment, it's just going to blend better to make purple. Now you may have noticed that the purple that we mix can be a little bit, it's a little bit off. And that's because this red is a step past magenta. It has a tiny bit of yellow in it. So you're kind of mixing a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of yellow within this purple. If you were to mix it with magenta, you would get a brighter, clearer purple. For this series of basic color exercises, you will need six half sheets of watercolor paper, a jar of water, a clean cloth, rag, or dish towel, a clean sponge, a brush, your set of six paints, and a painting board or surface that you can lay your wet paper on top of. You will also need a tray for soaking your paper. Each sheet of paper needs to go in individually, um, not as a stack, and I actually like to lift mine up and slide the new ones underneath. Out of all of the painting exercises, this one is perhaps the most simple, profound, and also the most difficult. Painting each color once through can be easy enough, especially when the experience is guided by someone else. But how can we bring ourselves to return to it time and time again? Painting individual colors is like a meditation the first few attempts are easy enough, but how do we stay with it? How can we learn to be fully present, open, and listening to what each color has to say? How do we hold back from naming our experiences too quickly in an effort to say, I've got this? It is helpful to imagine the colors as our friends or as people we can come to know Every human being has a surface exterior, a physical manifestation that is visible to others. But each of us has an inner life, something intangible that no other human being can ever come to fully know. Can you remember a time when you had a great misunderstanding with someone else, but with time you were able to reconcile and see each other in a new light? Treat your colors as a friend full of great wisdom, someone who always has something more to give, something new to teach. Allow the colors to make an impression upon you. Take the time to understand their inner nature. 
allow their qualities, moods, and gestures to work upon you. Close your eyes and imagine the beingness of red above and beyond the material world. What does it have to say?